dog. <laughs> Kenny was my best dog. Pass the shed! 50 yards, guts makes Canada border, he is gone! He's happy to kill us, Ray. I mean, look at me. You want to die today? Chasing him was your stupid idea. Second dog, son, wash him off! Guts can't kill them all! You sick bastard! No! 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 We were supposed to be back! Uh. Snow's not that cold when you're under it. Hungry guard? What? See, I have this theory that guys who break from federal custody with careful, intelligent planning never remember to have a good meal before they go. <laughs> And you've been loose, what, about 32 hours? Probably haven't had as much as a hostess ding-dong. You feel a little dizzy? Hypoglycemic? Who the hell are you? Winston McBride, deputy U.S. Marshal. Need to see my badge? I'm gonna kill you now. Now, hold on. That weapon you've got only holds six shots, right? You've already fired off four, which only leaves you two to bring me down. Meanwhile, I'm emptying my weapon into all your vital organs and effectively commuting your sentence. Well, then? I'll tell you what. Let's make it interesting. I'll waste all but two of my rounds. Then we can start even. Die hard, baby. Just clamp some jumper cables to my ears. I could jump start a freight train. Holy mackerel. Tom, what are you doing in our house? Well, you suffered a break in. Whole slew of them went down Friday night on our block. What happened to our famous neighborhood watch? Hey, I'm just a volunteer captain. I can't bird dog the deadbeats every second. What did they get? The burglars. Your house? Nothing, it looks like. You were lucky. Lucky. That'll clean right up. Yours truly, block watch Captain Campanus, had a crime scene technician over yesterday, dust for prints, sent him off to the National FBI computer. We're gonna catch somebody. I'm gonna go finish unpacking the car.
Tuttle. Uh, we have a warrant for your arrest. Mrs. Tuttle. Mrs. Sinclair. Put your hands top of your head. Please come out where I can see you. Tiger. Yes. McBride, U.S. Marshal. I suggest you let me take over here so you won't be held accountable for letting my fugitive get away. I did ask you to maintain a low profile until I arrived. Well, now, she almost killed one of my men with a bat. A whiffle bat? Just maintain a low profile and not apprehend the subject until I got here. Yes, sir. You did. Thank you. We won't mention it again, all right? Well, let's see. You know what to do now. Car rental agencies... Bus stations, airports, banks, cash-ready machines. She'll be traveling under new identity. She's probably changed her appearance already. Now, let's do a consent search of the house. One way to Atlanta, Georgia, please. 820, right. How many times does the bus stop before it gets to Des Moines? Good. I'd like to put this on the credit card number 69. So where's she going, Barry? My whole life is a lie. Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't know. I wasn't there. She had a child before she met you, huh? Yeah. Barry, did she, um... Did she ever make any sort of arrangements? You know, a plan in case something happened, in case you guys got split up? You know, any kind of plan? No. Did you ever meet the father of the child? Did she ever talk to him? You are talking about a woman that I have spent half my life with. I have slept with her, I have eaten with her, I have raised a child with her. You got the wrong woman. You made a mistake. Let me tell you about your wife, Barry. Susan Tuttle. Back in August of 1970, her and three of her friends, they broke into a United States Army draft board office. And they killed a security guard. Yeah. Just some old fat man sitting at his desk. He never even drew his weapon. Whatever she's been or done since then, Barry, does not concern me. She's made every reservation to three different cities on two current credit cards. That doesn't mean anything. Can I go home now? No. A bus reservation? No. Am I under arrest? No. Then what? You're helping me, Barry. Maybe she's gonna go to her kid. 
Now she knows that's the first place we'd look. But suppose she did it. These uh, horrible things you say she did. What do you expect of me? Am I supposed to help you put her away? Pacific Bank out in Bennettville. Cash card hadn't been used in eight years. Woman withdrew 300 bucks from a very stale savings account two hours ago. Bennettville, that's west. She's headed for the coast. Maybe she's gonna swim to China. <laughs> she's boxing herself in. We can cut her off here, here, and here. What's out there? Braddock College. Barry? Where does your wife's daughter go to school? Thanks. Next. Hi, I'm looking for Terry Sinclair. Is she in yet? Supposed to be. She's having a tough time with her new hours. Any minute. You're not meant for this job, Terry. This is the third day in a row. I'm going to make it work. I just have to find my morning groove. Mm hmm. Terry, um, your mom sent me to get you. I'm your dad. Helicopters are amazing things. Probably took you a little over two hours to get here from Bennettville. 45 minutes for me. I love helicopters. <sighs> Your daughter must have a daily ritual, huh? You figured we'd have the dorm staked out, better off to meet her here, right? You were right about that. But why come here at all? Frankly, I'm disappointed. I'm sorry. Well, it was dumb. I mean, nothing else you've done has been dumb. You gonna handcuff me? Yes, I am. We drive over and see your daughter. No. There won't be another time to say goodbye, Susan. No. No, there won't be another time, or no, you don't want to see her. I don't want to see her. You always knew it could happen. I know it's got to be tough. I got plenty of Kleenex. Don't hold back. Your mom gets busted for something she did 20 years ago. You're supposed to cry. I'm sorry. Hey, okay. it's a mandatory crying situation, babe. Huh? <laughs> there you go. Listen, I'm going to make you a promise. I promise you that we're going to make it through. We're going to make it through.
described before you got here that you have never let one get away from you. Is your record still intact, Marshal? Thomas Sal, Central District of California. Congratulations. You get to go home, sir. What's your name? Erica Lindquist. Ms. Lindquist, I want you to escort Mr. Sinclair back to his home and keep him under surveillance until you hear from me. I don't have my stuff. Wait a second. You can't come in here and turn it all upside down. I don't care what you think she did. My wife has rights. Your wife is a fugitive from justice. Her rights are extremely limited. Miss Lindquist, I can't drive your car without your keys. Mr. Sinclair goes directly home. I'll inform your captain you're working for me, all right? Thank you. Where are you taking her? Tom, I'll call you. years ago, I gave it my right to see you, watch you grow up. I did that so that you would be safe. This is just happening way too fast. Terry, I'm your dad. Somebody following us? Damn it. Somebody's following us. sometime this afternoon. Take me in. I want to confess. I don't get it. A woman wanted for murder, very skilled at the art of not existing, runs to see her daughter at great personal risk, then gets caught and doesn't want to see her. Now, that's a puzzler. Maybe she's ashamed. Maybe. That'd be convenient. stories. Unless you were there, it's like fiction. It's Four House in Saigon, the night the city fell. Burma, Philippines, corpses rotting in the killing fields in Pitidan Khan. Stench. You wanted to whip off your nose. Wow. That sounds so scary. Santa Cruz. September 14, 1975, Boardwalk parking lot. I watched as your mom drove away from me. Taking you. That was scary. <laughs> Happy to think your mom will dig frog completely. For her 21st birthday, I surprised her with a trip to Cuba. She went wild on it. Mom went to Cuba? In the drug smuggler's plane with a couple of emigrating Vinceramos. Castro played piano, sang her a steely dance. <laughs> Did you ever tell you about the time I tried to kill her? What? I told you that. No. Well, I didn't really try to kill her. You know.
Hey. You got a phone? Um, yeah, we do, but uh, it, it's out of order. Is it an important call? Yeah. You the marshal? Yeah. Did you run a scan on the plate? Yeah, your people are working on it. We couldn't get anywhere. You need me to hang around? No, he's mine now. Thanks, I appreciate it. You know, I talked to a lawyer about my nose. Once we go to the doctor twice a week. Could be long-term damage. Long-term damage is what this poor guy has suffered. Can you imagine? Here. I'm not supposed to do that. I could lose my job. But, uh... I I I'd be willing to lose my job for you. I'm 20. Going to the store, do you want anything? Susan, if there's any compelling reason why I shouldn't go in there and talk to your daughter and the man who's with her, I think you should tell me now. Open the safe. Oh, man. It's on a timer. Ding dong, it's time. Washington plates. Yeah, uh, hey, Eddie. Yeah, check it out. He might be a protective witness or something like that. All right. I need to know, Eddie. I'll call you back in 10 minutes. Thanks. I think your room service is here. Did you get the news about Mr. Sinclair? Yeah. Everyone in Washington wants to know when you plan to bring Miss Tuttle in. Tell them I don't know. Thanks, Tom. Post office robbery, summer of 1974. This is the last time anyone saw you, Susan. I'm having deja vu. Post office robber and yesterday's convenience store robber. The same guy. Identical M.O. You were the hostage then. Your daughter's the hostage now. That's you, right? You were pregnant, what, about six months? Eight. Eight months. I want to talk to my husband. This guy in the tape is the biological father of your daughter, isn't he? I want to talk to Barry. Why did he take your daughter? What's his name? What does he want from you, Susan? I want to talk to my husband. I'm sorry. Your husband's dead. <clears throat> Suicide. No. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here! Winston, William Tepper. Tepper. Loyal to you is one of yours, right? Me, you're not the same. But you can consider yourself officially advised to leave him the hell alone. Your man informed on Susan Tuttle and her friends in that ramble, is that right? 
Just say it's true. This is a guesswork. Well, it fits now, doesn't it? I saw him rob a convenience store yesterday. And you know he robbed the post office back in 74. I'm gonna write it all up in my report to the U.S. Attorney recommending a full review of the draft board incident. Is that two peas in temper? What are you doing this for? You got your girl. I just want his name. Yeah. Oh, no, no. No, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm Bailey. Go to Langley. Talk to the director. See if he gets a flying fandango about some hairnet hippie and a lame ball excuses for crimes against the country. When you catch him, you call me. He's your informant. You don't know where he is? Look, just call me, all right? I need to debrief him. Debrief him? No, I need him alive. That's it. He killed that guard when he was on your payroll, didn't he? Now, that's a major embarrassment. That's why you can't find him. You can't find him because he doesn't want to be debriefed. Call this living. How long were you going to wait before you told me about my husband? I can't help Barry, but I can't help you. You did this to me. You're supposed to be doing your job. This isn't part of your job. I have two daughters. Do you ever wonder why the cops are waiting for you at the draft board office? We're not really that smart, you know. Unless we have friends. They had files on all of us. We're tracking all of us. Your boyfriend set you up. What? He was a government informer, CIA. What's his name, Susan? went into that draft board to burn files. Not to hurt people, to save them. We were only in there 10 minutes before everything came apart. It was like a storm. He said we should stay behind, split up, hide by standing still, he called it, waiting for the cops to go chasing the others. But there was this one old man left, this, this old guard. And I heard a gunshot, a wimpy gunshot, like a firecracker. I turned and my wife was holding a gun. The others died in a car crash trying to get away. I was an accessory to murder. I had to go underground with him. Why didn't you just turn yourself in and testify against him? I loved him. So, what's your major? I haven't declared yet. Maybe, maybe history. <clears throat> More stories. Live or listen. May I give you a little bit of fatherly advice? Hmm? Choose to live. You go the other way, you might as well put a gun in your mouth right now and pull the trigger. I came home late one night and a 
my boyfriend was gone. He'd left Terry with this hashed out moron named Malcolm who hadn't even thought to give her dinner or to change her diaper. Three days later, he shows up. He'd been to Berkeley. <laughs> he was shocked that I even minded. See, it was the life he loved. I made the deal, and he let me go. He could have his life, and you could have your baby. It's a short version. But if you ever got caught, he'd come after Terry and use it for insurance in case you ever talk. I don't know what he'll do to her. I don't trust him. He's the only one who can prove you're innocent. I need his name. What's his name? No. No, no. The more you guys pressure him, the more desperate he's going to become. Susan, it's not you guys. It's not CIA. It's me, you, and your daughter, Terry. I need your help. I'll lead you to him. But you have to take me with you. I'd like to leave a message for Dr. Brown. <gasps> oh, I'm sorry. Tell him that Mrs. Brown called from Whidbey. Everything's fine here, and the house at seven Fisher Way is all he hoped it would be. Okay, you know. Who did you call? Get off me! You're heavy! I'm too heavy. It's always been my problem. Your mother, finally, she couldn't get her mind around me. I'm so big and heavy. What, robbing convenience stores? Kicking 17-year-old boys upside the head? Yeah, that's big time! I only came with you to find out who you are! My father! You owe me your life, Susan! You owe me your life! <laughs> 1022. That's right, 1022. Dr. Brown. Do you have any messages for Dr. Brown?
guys, just relax. You're not gonna find her. Truscott's Mercury and your mom's gone down the drain. Your perfect game is spoiled, son. Truscott's your man. He's your invention. Stay out of my way. You're in your own way. You went to the property with felonious intent. You had vehicular assault, breaking and entry, illegal discharge. He's one firearm. of mine. Terry! Daddy! 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 Take Miss Sinclair back to her college dorm and post a watch in case her mother shows up. Let me go with my daughter. You're dead, remember? My family was at risk. My whole life, everything. Hey, Barry, I'm not arguing with you. You want me to say it again? No, I don't. Loyal likes to be the last one to leave. Historical fact. When he does, we'll get him. He won't leave until we do. Where was it? Reno? She was still with the SLA then, and, and, and with that guy. What was his name? Um, Sink you. Sink you. Right, right. Here he is. He, he kidnaps the richest girl in America, and there he is in a coffee shop with a golden spur playing Keno for eight hours. Well, we never met Patty Hearst. Oh, we did. We did. He said he had a system, a Keno system. <laughs> <laughs> you always had the best laugh. Uh, he did a pretty good job bringing up Terry. Maybe she has a little too much middle class in her, but so did I. Yeah, so did you. Montana. The plan was to go to Montana. We got a little cabin there, Nick. Shh. I don't want to know what the plan is. I want you to start the engine, turn on the headlights, and drive away. Look. 
Marshal, if she's in there... Drive to the ferry landing in Silverdale, put the keys under the mat, do not lock the car, and wait for me there. But wait for me there, Barry. Ow. Just us again. Take it down. I didn't talk, Loyal. I didn't tell the marshal anything. I like it when it's just us. Eastern Europe. This time next week, we'll be way deep pioneers on a new frontier. <laughs> that deal three days ago. Marshal? I figured it ought to take me two hours to walk to the ferry landing. You'll make it in 20 minutes. The ferry's waiting for you. Why? Because it's right. Supposed to be a control delivery. I thought I could use her to get him and bring them both in. No, loyal trust guy's dead, sir. No, he gave me no latitude. Uh huh. Well, I blew it. She got away. Yes, sir, she's gone.
Starting this Saturday, you can see the marshal every week. You're busted. McBride's on the trail of a well-to-do Bunny and Clyde. There we are. Both our fugitives are MBA. I think our fugitives are running from something a hell of a lot bigger than back taxes. They'll risk everything just to keep on living the good life. The plan was to disappear and start over. Hey! Even if it means changing their whole life. Want a little trip? The Marshal. <laughs> Premieres at its regular time Saturday at 10, 9 central here on ABC. This is Joan London. And Forrest Sawyer. Tomorrow can fasting and juicing make you healthier. Also the healing power of dreams and John Stossel on the differences between boys and girls. Good morning America tomorrow here on ABC. I'm Ted Koppel. Later on Nightline, slaps, kicks, a bloody lip, a black eye, testimony about a beaten wife in the state versus O.J. Simpson tonight.